What does cost have to do with the grand convergence happening in medicine? I had an opportunity to share my thoughts on the London Functional Forum. There's one part of this convergence that we're going to talk about tonight, because what I hope is going to happen tonight is you're going to see that functional medicine is not just an interesting thing for us all to do and a nice way to treat patients, but actually a solution to the biggest problem that is the biggest part of this convergence, and that is cost, right? So let's talk a little bit about cost. So anyone familiar with Moore's law, right? Moore's law predicts that, um, that the cost of technology halves every 18 months and that technology gets twice as good. So here you see the cost of computing equal to an iPad 2 and how it's come back. This is a logarithmic scale. So this is an exponential decrease in costs of computing. Same thing with solar energy. Massive decreases over time, what it takes to make solar energy decreasing very consistently. The cost of the human genome, you know, again, there's logarithmic scale down the left, so you can see that we're beating Moore's law by the cost of genome sequencing. Now it's less than $1,000 to sequence a genome. So in all these areas, wow, isn't cost coming down so exciting? And yet, what is the outlier to this whole thing? Healthcare costs. And it's the problem in the UK, and it's the problem in America, and it's the problem in every country that has, uh, you know, it's, you know my, my father lives in South Africa. Number one diagnosis, TB, malaria, no, type 2 diabetes. Same in Haiti, same in China, same in India. You know, it's, this, it's the biggest thing, it's the biggest diagnosis. So, you know, uh, chronic disease and the costs associated with non communicable disease are arguably the biggest problem in the world. And I will show you tonight, hopefully, through what we see, is that the functional medicine operating system provides the most logical solution for that, and that is a very exciting time to be in functional medicine. So um, Rob Kirk, who's somewhere here uh, in the back there, sent me uh, this awesome thing. I saw him at the IFM conference a couple of weeks ago, and he sent me this thing called the King's Fund. And this was... Um, a British charter to essentially look at how we could transform the healthcare system. For the first time tonight, we're not going to be talking about how to do this in America, where all doctors are all entrepreneurial and have their own practice and, you know, uh, you know the typical uh, American way. But it's a bit different in England. It's a bit of a different mindset. And so we're going to talk about how we can really transform it here. But he's the, this is a, a program on transforming our healthcare systems, the top 10 priorities for commissioners. And guess what? Seven of them are totally relevant to the practice of functional medicine. Let's look at the first four out of the first five. Active support for self-management, right? So actually getting to a point where people take care of their own health, that is a big part of functional medicine. It's empowering the patient through a therapeutic partnership. So boom, covers number one. Primary prevention, you know, a big part of functional medicine. Primary prevention, removing the obstacles to cure. Uh, you know, a lot of other things that, that are covered in there. Secondary prevention, improving the the management of patients with both mental and physical health needs. If you're up to date on the latest clinical information and studies, you'll see that a lot of anxiety and depression, mental health issues can be tied to inflammation, and functional medicine is an operating system to get rid of inflammation or reduce inflammation, and so it's totally relevant. Thanks so much for watching, and for more great clips like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've created a special free video just for you. It's called the five steps to becoming a leader in your wellness community. And it'll give you some of the starting points on how to position yourself as the leader in your zip code of your health community. All you have to do is click on the link below.